Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, thanks for uh, for joining us. I got Chris here, Nate, just Cheers. not with us tonight. Cheers, happy holidays. Speaking of the holidays, the holidays are coming. And um, I don't know about your family, but my family, a lot of people are not on time. So what I don't do is a plated meal. What I typically do is uh, a lot of like crock pot stuff and uh, steam table stuff, chafing dish stuff. One of the things I've always struggled with was finding a good meat, especially beef, that sits well on a steam table. So uh, I have found this recipe, very simple, but keeps very well. You can leave it sitting in a crock pot on, not even, not low, but on warm. For a really long time, you can put it in a chafing dish and uh, the, moist, the meat stays moist, tender, delicious. Sauce has got a really intense flavor. So that's what this cook is all about. We're not going out to the griddle. This is about the holidays. This is about getting beef, broccoli, and rice on a buffet table and have it sit comfortably and still be delicious after sitting there for 35, 45 minutes. Nice. Yep. And where's the rice at? You're gonna make it. All right. <laughs> so if you're interested in that, stick around. We'll cut to the intro. We'll be right back. For ingredients, a very, very simple, very straightforward. I've got four to five cloves of fresh garlic. I have a one inch nub of fresh ginger, peeled. I've got a quarter cup of sugar. I have a quarter cup of soy sauce. I tried to keep this sort of like all in the fours. So you have <laughs> quarter cup sugar, quarter cup soy sauce, four cloves of garlic, and then one cup of water. So quarter cup times four, cup. right. There you go. Broccoli is optional, right? I'm gonna throw it in at the end, do beef and broccoli, but you can certainly do just teriyaki beef. And then for the beef, uh, to make this more affordable, you notice we're calling them beef tips, not steak tips. That's because it's not steak. Steak is crazy expensive right now. Mm -hmm. This is sold in my market as stew beef. That's what's literally on the label. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you guys can tell me in the comments. Is stew beef a New England thing or is stew beef sold all over the country? So they call it chuck too? Is that what the same stuff? No. No, it's different? No, no it's actually cut up into little chunks. Yep. It just says stew beef. So I asked the butcher what it is, it's top round. They didn't have any out, so I bought a top round roast. You basically want to cut that into cubes. Don't go too big. Um, these are gonna cook, they're gonna braise for a long time. So they're gonna have sort of that beef stew tenderness. And if it's too big, if you cut it too big, it's just a mouthful of a ton of beef shreds. Mm -hmm. So three quarter inch in all directions is what I found to be just about a good ratio of sauce to meat. So with that, you can start browning that. Step number one, brown the heck out of those things in a stainless steel skillet. A little bit, let me get you some oil. And while Chris is getting those brown, medium heat, we're gonna get started on the marinade. Well, not marinade, but sauce rather. All right, so Chris dropped the meat in the pan. So one thing I want you guys to notice is that the pan is very much overcrowded with meat. That's actually okay. This stuff is gonna sit in here for an hour and a half in total. You want it, you know this, if you put a lot of this top round into a pan and you start cooking it, it gives off a ton of liquid. Like As you can see, there's a ton of liquid coming off, right? So you're gonna let that all come out. We're gonna flip it. We're gonna cook everything until it evaporates and it basically becomes an almost dry pan. Once we get to that point, we're gonna dump in the sauce we're about to make. So the sauce doesn't get much easier than this. Oh, by the way, do, don't salt the meat. The soy sauce and the sauce that we're gonna braise this in, it's gonna cook down, cook down quite a bit. So if you, it, it will be salty if you get the sauce too thick. But uh, let's just lop up the ginger. You haven't bought the jaw ginger yet, huh? No. <laughs> it's good. I have it, I, I know, actually have I the garlic too. It. It's really good, both of them. I know you love they it. They last a long time and they, they hold the flavor and the taste. It's really good. Garlic, I'm not even gonna chop. It's going right in like that. Uh, sugar? But you're right, still nothing better than fresh. You can smell it already. Yeah. Love the smell of fresh garlic. I do too. Soy. But it's missing your favorite thing, Nate. Butter. <laughs> Water. <laughs> and then you just uh, spin the heck out of this. So you get everything nice and fine. It's gonna be loud. Yeah, so take a little taste of that. Try not to get the chunks of the raw garlic. Why, oh, yeah, I don't mind it. <laughs> it's a little intense, a little intense before you cook it. Oh, I love it. But you notice how it's oh. a little watery. A little bit, I guess. I'm gonna make it very watery. Yeah. Because it's gonna cook for so long over there and reduce so much. Mm. So that's kind of on purpose. Oh, really? So you put more water than you normally do? Yeah, I'm gonna put this well, in you and I'm gonna it? put a whole bunch more water. Gotcha. So. Let's still that, keep the flavor. Let's check out the meat. So Chris, we've been working on flipping the meat. You guys can see all the moisture that we talked about. Lift up this piece over here, Chris, on the edge so we can see all the browning. Let's see the pan. Oh, 
different. But the pan right there, that's going to give some really delicious flavor. Yeah. If these fight you and they don't want to flip, some of them are sticking, that's okay. That's Not the right. end of the world. Like that guy, those two are welded on, aren't they? Oh, they are. Not moving if their life depended oh. on it. Look at that. You read all that moisture? Look at it. it smells yeah. good. Yeah, it's amazing how much they give up, huh? Mm. So we want to wait for that to dry out. Not burn, but dry out. So it has literally been, what would you say, Chris? Maybe a minute and a half since we flipped them. Yeah. And you guys can see they're already getting really dry. Time to add the watery teriyaki sauce. Like so. I'm just gonna grab a spoon to scrape that pan down. <laughs> yeah, get that deliciousness off the pan and into the sauce. Actually, I'll use a spatula. And that is, believe it or not, the entire thing. Now, this is not a portion for a party, right? This is a portion just to show you guys how we do it, but uh, or how I plan to do it on Christmas. But you can certainly scale this up and use a uh, much more beef, much larger pan. And uh, this stuff just really holds well. As long as you give it a stir during the party as you walk by. Or even if you put this in a pan and you put it on your griddle, tailgating a pan next to it of rice, mm, it'd be really good. good. Now I do want to say, here we have like just about enough liquid for the amount of steak, the amount of beef tips. If you're shy, add water. No joke, it is not going to affect the flavor. You want the liquid to be just about to the top of the meat, and then we're going to bring it to a boil. If it's not enough, put water in. At the end of this cooking process, that water is going to evaporate off. We're going to concentrate the sauce, and it makes no difference. Once we get this to a boil, which actually it's pretty hot already, that's going to be a minute. Why don't you guys hang out for a minute, and we'll move it on the next step. To a low burner, just like that. Sure. Put it on a simmer, put a lid on it, and we're going to check it in one hour. Chris, thank you for holding the camera. So it's been an hour, and we're going to pop that open. You can see that the liquid has reduced quite a bit. And we're just gonna poke them with a fork. These are still, my fork is not going through easily. There's a timer. So they're still not done. So what we're gonna do is give all these a flip. S smells delicious. <laughs> it's, the house smells really, really good. You can see they shrunk up a little bit. So we're gonna give them all a flip. It smells like comfort food. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just so they don't dry out. And we're gonna go about another 30 minutes. But what you're basically looking for is we're gonna let, let them cook uncovered until when you pierce them with a fork, it goes through nice and easy. And that's it, simple as that. How long do you think that's gonna take? I think it's gonna be about 30 minutes. And somewhere around the 20 minute mark, I'm gonna grab this broccoli and drop it in just to let that steam up a bit. But we'll come back in 30 and see how they are. And we got some rice going. Yep, rice is done. Yeah, just sitting hot. All right, so let me set a timer for 30. Back to drinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're down to 56 seconds left. You can see the sauce there has reduced quite a bit. I will say they're not quite as tender as I wanted. I'm still getting a little of pushback, you know, when I try to pierce through them. So they could probably go a little bit longer, but it is getting late. So I'm gonna dump my broccoli on here. Let that go for, I don't know, Chris, how do you like your broccoli? Yeah, just a little cooked. I, I, I like a little crunch on it. All right, and we'll let, maybe let it go five minutes. Let it go five minutes and uh, we'll play it up. We're done. I'm gonna kill the timer. Also starting the turkey tacos for the kids' dinner tonight because I don't have enough beef to make this their dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what can we say? Work's never done. All right, look at that. You can zoom in on that, Chris. That looks delicious. Make it a little platter. Smells good, Nate. Mmm, it does, doesn't it? Get you in between your lights here, Nate. <laughs> All right. Try and get some sauce for you too, Chris. A little drizzle over there. Yeah. Go heavy with the sauce. Yeah, perfect. This will be for me, and everyone else gets turkey tacos. Broccoli looks good, huh? Mm hmm. It smells delicious. Let's see how it tastes. So, after. I mean, a lot of passive cooking, but 90 minutes of cooking, maybe a little bit more. Um, what do you think? I think it's very, very tasty. The sauce makes everything. Yeah. <laughs> it really does. The sauce packs a punch. The beef is good. Much more tender than I kind of thought it was going to be a night. Mm. I think it came out really good. Uh, but the sauce is what makes it. Oh, without a doubt. And the longer it's going to sit in that sauce, the better this is going to get. The beef on the inside is actually a little dry. So you need the sticky sauce mm. to, to coat it. Mm -hmm. Which is what you get here. So it's uh, perfect with the rice and broccoli. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is really good. Really good. Mm. 
And for five bucks a pound, right? Coming yep. around there for the top round. <clears throat> and I like the idea that's gonna be sitting at your party for probably four or five hours. It's gonna be sitting yeah. there, you know? Yeah. So yeah, boom, that's good. It is good. But you know, a lot of the the ginger really comes through. Yeah, you can taste the ginger. It really comes through. Taste the garlic and the, the it's not too mm. salty at all. That's very right. much salt. Really good. Mm. Anyways, guys, thanks for sticking around. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you consider doing this for your holidays. Mm -hmm. um, or if not, just for a dime. We'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>